What's up, hustlers? It's your boy JT Hustles back in with another video. I'm doing this video with Mr. Mike Sneed. Be sure to follow Appliance Bootcamp if you haven't done so already on YouTube. In this video, I want to help those of you out there that are in my DMs, in my comment section, my Facebook Messenger, or anybody out there that's just curious to know how do you actually value your business and what to expect if you're trying to find somebody to finance your business outside of the traditional bank like when you go out talking to investors let's get into it i'm disappointed giving you the blueprint to get it out here and you don't want to do what it takes guys so I'm gonna let Mike start off uh, at the top and we'll just go through it and this is just Mike is an investor uh, as part of P1322 and you guys know he invests in real estate appliance boot camp is on appliance business and things of that nature as well so we gonna first let you guys hear from him firsthand pretty much how do you value a business uh, what we normally done in the businesses that I actually uh, actually sold or the ones I got involved with and try to purchase uh, what we'll do we'll look at the net and when we say the net, um, the net profits, we want to see after they paid for everything, they paid everybody's salary, how much money did the actual owner put in his pocket. So the web of money that he was able to put into his pocket, we will multiply that times five. And what that would do, that give you a 20% 20, 20 return on your money. And that take you at least five years to get your money back. And that's how much we figured that his business was worth um, just on just the business itself. Now, if he had like physical property, like equipment and stuff like that, then we'll have to actually come out and get somebody to actually give us an estimate on how much that equipment was worth with depreciation and stuff like that. And that would get totaled into what we think the actual business was worth. So, well, if we multiplied that net profit by five, and then whatever property and equipment he had added up, we'll total both of those up. And that's how much that business would actually work. Percentage wise, how much money would you lend somebody as it relates to their uh, their value of their business? Business wise, I haven't loaned money towards somebody for their business, <laughs> but I have loaned money to people who was actually flipping houses as like a hard money lender. And with that, we would loan up to 70% of what the um, after repair value was. And what that was done, um, if they couldn't actually pay us back our money, uh, we were actually what they call first person um, uh, lien holders, meaning that we could actually foreclose on the property, take the property back, and we could get somebody else to actually finish the property. And then once we sold it, we'll still have enough cushion where we can actually pay that person who could actually finish it, pay, the, pay for the people to actually do the bankruptcy and, or, or the repossession of the property, and we will still get our money back. So we made sure, regardless of whatever happened, we we're going to get our money back. And we also made sure that the person had life insurance policies and stuff. So if he was to die in the process, we made sure that we got paid and we got our money back. Cool, cool. So uh, after that, these are just some averages. I want you guys to understand when you're valuing your business, if you research it properly, you'll find that they call them multipliers. And there is a national average multiplier, but that doesn't mean that that is the multiplier you should use. Different industries have different multipliers. So like Mike says, his is five. The national average is 0 0.6 times your gross revenue, uh, not to insult anybody's intelligence, but gross is before you pay any bills. That's the simplest way uh, to describe that. So before you pay anything, the total amount of money you got coming in, uh, multiply that times 0 0.6, and that is the national average of determining what is your business worth, right? Mm -hmm. The food business, a multiplier is usually two. So two times your actual profits, right? So this is not gross. And when Mike does the net times five, the net is not the gross, right? Those are the profits. Food business is the same way. Two times whatever your profits are after you pay everything is what they use to value that business, right? And you can do further research depending on your industry if you want to find out your exact multiplier. Or you can't go wrong by just using the national average and say multiply whatever you got coming in every month times 12 and then times that number times 0 0.6 and that is what your business is worth, right? All of that to say this. If you have an idea, 
it's worth nothing, right? And, and I know that's harsh to hear. A lot of people don't like to hear that. I get messages all the time about people having ideas yeah. and want me to invest and let's do this together. But I want you to understand that uh, when it comes to investing in business, you gotta have a proven product, a proven system. We all have great ideas, right? So that doesn't mean that whatever your idea is will actually be a good investment for anybody to take on. So if you want to be somebody that wants to go out and get investors, don't be surprised when that man or woman asks you, uh, what have you done? All right, Mike, if I was to come to you, you didn't know me, maybe I'm your wife's cousin, friend, mm -hmm. or somebody like that, and I hear that you're an entrepreneur, and I say, Mr. Sneed, uh, I have this great idea. I want you to invest $10,000 into it. What would be some questions you would ask me so the viewers at home kind of got an idea of what to expect? Uh, first thing I want to know is the business you're doing and have you ever done it before and then if or if you have done it before I want to know what was your results that you actually get the results that you telling me you're going to get with this one um, if you uh, if you have then I'm going to compare that against what the market average is and see if what you're doing is something that's uh, this aspect that I can see across other other spectrums of the market or you were just a one-time hit wonder it just uh, caught, caught lightning in a bottle one time uh, then from there um, I want to know what type of tangible assets you have that I can actually tie into the deal to make sure that I get my money. So if you uh, came to me and you want to buy ten, you want to borrow ten thousand dollars. I want to see what do you have that actually adds up to ten thousand dollars. In case you can't pay me back, I want to be able to pull that back so I can actually get my money. So I want to tie some tangible to it. I just don't want to tie uh, the fact that you have a good idea. I want to put some tangible to it. So a contract is not enough. Contract is not enough. All right, and, and I wanted to point that out for those of you that are watching this video because I know lots of people will say, well, we're going to have a contract, and if I don't pay you, we'll go to court. And they want people to have that warm and fuzzy feeling because you got that piece of paper. Yeah, no, contracts, uh, my, one of my business partners told me all the time, uh, when, I, uh, when I first got into business, I'd tell him, uh, uh, I'd say, Let, let's, uh, let's sign this contract. And he would tell me, uh, I'll sign it, but it don't mean anything. Because <laughs> what happened, uh, if you could take, you know, if I ain't, if I ain't got it, no, no, you ain't going to be able to get it. Because I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to, you're not going to sign it. Uh, I could get you to sign a personal guarantee, a uh, personal guarantee saying that you're going to uh, pay it and I can, I can hold you personally liable to it. But if you ain't got the money, you ain't got the money. You know, I can't make you have the money. You ain't got it. You ain't got it. So uh, I want to make sure that I can pull something from you to actually get my money. So I want something tangible. Um, uh, or somebody that you know that got something tangible that I can pull. I wanna, uh, want them to actually come in and actually maybe co-sign for you or uh, something like that. I need a way to make sure that my money is going to come back to me. All right, cool. So there you have it, you guys. Real quick video. Hopefully this benefits those of you out there who are thinking about starting a business with investors. I know all of you uh, don't need investors to start businesses. I personally recommend in the beginning that you try to do it by just doing different side hustles, uh, becoming an appliance repair person, fixing cell phones, doing uh, an independent courier service, whatever it is you can uh, to try to get that money up yourself. Because once you start dealing with investors, of course, now you got to answer to somebody else on top of becoming proficient in your business but I get it a lot so I had to make this video I want you guys to understand that this is what you should realistically expect if you want to raise money from an investor first of all an idea is not going to be good enough you got to have something uh, to bring to the table besides your idea and besides that contract also uh, don't be taken back when just like we wrote on the board if they expect you to be willing to tie your money or they expect to be able to tie their money against a tangible asset. So if they expect to get the title to your car in order to give you that $2,500, don't be like, oh, they robbing me or whatever the case may be, right? That's just normal in this business because they don't want to lose money either. You want to get some funding and start a successful business and they're willing to support you, but they don't want to lose money and you don't want to lose money either. So they're going to do what's in their best interest and that's not being mean or being messed up. That's just the real behind it. Also, uh, keep in mind, as Mike mentioned before too, they may want to have the power to remove you out of that business and put somebody else in place that can get the job done. Yes, they might want to be able to take you out of your business, your business idea, whatever it is, and put somebody that they feel is more competent that can get the job done if you fail, right? This is not something that uh, one day they woke up on the wrong side of the bed and they kick you out 
of the business. But if, if you're not able to perform and they think somebody else can get results, they want to have that power to say, okay, I don't want to lose my money. You going to get out of here. We going to bring in Mike Sneed and he going to get the job done for us, right? And the last thing that Mike touched on is life insurance. I know some of you going to say, sounds like the mob, like they going to kill me if I don't pay back the money, but it's not anything like that. Uh, they just want to have that guarantee, that peace of mind. So after watching this video, I hope you now understand how do you properly value your business when you go in to raise money uh, from investors. This is just a little bit of information that you need to be thinking of. And until next time, to all my hustlers stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm gone.